Good morning, Tube. It is Sunday, April 28th, and I thought I would come to you for another episode while I had the chance. It's a gloomy day here. It's done nothing but rain this whole spring, um, but I'm not complaining because I am hopeful that the wet weather will help cut down on the um, gypsy moths. For those of you not from this area, they're um, caterpillars that eat the trees and then turn into moths that lay eggs. They're terrible. I hate them. And um, their only natural enemies are um, funguses that grow in the soil in wet weather. So I am hopeful that the rain we've been having will encourage the viruses to grow or funguses or whatever they are and we won't have such a terrible gypsy moth outbreak as we have had for the past couple of years. So, I'm looking on the bright side. Anyway, I thought I would come to you and show you what I've been working on. I've been loving everyone's mania videos. Um, as you know, I am doing a monogamous mania working on Sparrow, so I really have no exciting mania plans to share with you, but hopefully um, next time I do a video, we will have some good progress on Sparrow. So the first thing I wanted to talk to you about was market haul. And I hesitate to use the word haul because I didn't get very much from market, but I wanted to show you what I did get. Um, the first thing I mentioned in the last video that I was looking on um, Teresa's site, Kitten Stitchers, and saw this market release and immediately bought it, which is something I don't normally do. Usually I have to see a pattern and see it and like it every time. And then finally, after three or four or five times of seeing it and loving it, I will buy it. This one was the exception. I saw it, knew I had to have it, and put it in my cart. And I have not seen anybody show this. So, without further ado, this is a Summer Garden by Needlework Press. Now, why did I have to have this? First of all, it's symmetrical, and you all know how I feel about that. Now, person. I don't really like people in my stitching and this person is um, not my favorite. So when I do stitch this, there will be no person. But I just loved it. And so that will probably um, go on the 2020 stitching list. I also got Forever and Ever with Thy Needle. This is going to be um, changed slightly, but I loved that. And then finally, as everyone did, I got Savior's Praise. And I don't have any plans on starting that, especially not until Sparrow is finished, but I have it. And then my final purchase from that batch was not a market haul. But it is Stover Pillows. And um, the reason that I got this is because this is my false graph pattern. And so when I do finally stitch these, I will be looking for a linen that is this color. And I will also be stitching in blue to match this color. So I figured that would look fantastic in a little dough bowl on my dining room table. And my final new pattern was actually Stitchy Kindness from a fan at Frugal Yankee who got this for me. She said that it reminded me of her, so I very much appreciate it. You know who you are. I am so thankful for you. And I can't wait to be stitching this one. I, lo I love, okay, I just got done saying I don't like people. I love her checkerboard dress. So, that's the new acquisitions. On to progress, or whips as they are called. The first piece of progress I want to show you um, is Better to Dwell, 
I believe I started this last time. And I changed it up. And it's an almost finish, but it's not a finish. So this is what I have. As you can see, I changed the words. Proverbs 31. What did I not do? Why is this not finished? Well, you know I was going to start patterns so that I could do brainless stitching at StitchCon. So there's solid lines in between each of these word or lines of writing. And so I didn't stitch any of the solid lines. And then here you can see there's a solid line that goes all the way across under all this brown. So I didn't do that either. And then the same thing down here. There's another solid line across that I need to put in. So that should be a very quick finish at StitchCon, but um, brainless and no counting. So I started the lines you can see here. So I'll know what color and I'll just go on across and that will be easy. And then that one will be done before too much longer. So I actually finished that one quicker than I thought I would, or finished it to the point where I didn't want to stitch any more on it. Um, and so what I decided was that I would make a new birthday start. Now, last I spoke with you, I had mentioned that I was going to start um, Penny Pumpkin and Blue Skin because both of those patterns had large areas that I could outline and then use to fill in at StitchCon. And so not a day or two after I filmed that video, I realized that I had another pattern in my stash that I really wanted to get done. And it also had large areas of stitching. So for my birthday start, I decided I would begin Autumn's Fruitful Labor. And I figured if I could get the pumpkins and the fence stitched, then I could just fill in brown at StitchCon. And if I could get this outlined, then I could fill in, I still don't know, it looks like a carrot to me, but like a basket, I, I don't know what it is. But if I could outline this thing, then that would also be great for filling in at StitchCon. But, as you will see in a minute, I needed to start up at the corner. I'm going to change this pattern so the center of the chart is not really the center of what I'm going to be stitching. So I needed to start at the corner. And I knew it would take me a while to get work my way down so that I could get this area stitched. So I started on that on my birthday. And I'm not going to take it out of... my scroll frame here. But I started up top, worked my way down, and then I outlined all of this brown area, and you'll have to take my word for it, but the fence is done. So at StitchCon, I'm gonna fill in this whole area right here with brown. As you can see, I've got this outlined, so that's gonna get filled in. I can fill in her apron with white, I can fill in her dress with blue, so I, truthfully, I could work this whole project at StitchCon and not fill in everything I want to fill in, but that's okay. So what I'm doing now is taking the last couple of days of April just to stitch areas, you know, whatever I want to stitch, because the majority, the important part is, is done. Like I can fill in and that's my goal. So I'm over here working on his shovel right now. Um, if I can figure out what color I'm going to use for his jacket, I might stitch that. Um, I am I'm using some of the called for colors, but mostly um, Victorian motto and substitutions from my stash on this one. And I'm going to talk to you more about this one in a minute because um, I am going to resize that one. And then the other one that I have some progress on is this one. Never Let You Go by Heartstring Samplery. It's been a while I think. This is my Sunday stitch and so it's not even in any kind of 
Q-snaps or anything. So what I've been doing is working on this flower and I will be working on this one this afternoon. And I am changing this one, as you can tell. Um, let's get it right here. The original has the alphabet and then these flowers and the cherubs and then the never let you go phrase and then the flowers and the people in the house. Now, <clears throat> yes, I don't like people and I considered not stitching these people. However, the wording is, I wish I was a little seed, I'd grow and grow and grow, I'd twine myself around your heart and never let you go. And so I, I thought that the sampler needed the people because it's about love and people. And I'm stitching this on Sundays after I have to say goodbye to my husband. So I wanted the people in there. But it's not a symmetrical sampler. And I kind of have a thing about that. So I decided to make some changes. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about because I know there are a lot of you out there who want to go about changing samplers to make them fit either standard size frames or frames that you've acquired at flea markets and thrift stores. And so I'm gonna to talk to you, um, hopefully pretty extensively today, about my thought process and how I go about making changes to those designs. So the first thing I'm gonna tell you is that I have, this was last year's um, stitching journal, and I have a new one for this year, but, can you see this? This is all my, my chicken scratch about never let you go. And I tend to do this for every pattern that I'm working on. So I did not have a frame in mind for this sampler. Sometimes I do. For Autumn's Fruitful Labor, I had a frame that I wanted to fit it in. So I will talk to you about how I went about doing that after I discuss this one. So first scenario is you don't have a frame, but you want it to be a standard size so that you can frame it yourself and not pay through the nose to get a custom frame made. And that's where I was at this one. And I knew, let me look at this right here. See this part right here, the wording ends and then there's a heart and then that's where Beth added her initials. I didn't like that. And the reason I didn't like that was I had to do this in a sampler that I stitched and it was a total mistake. <laughs> I had miscalculated and I needed to sign my work over here on the side of the saying that I had not properly centered. And so it bothered me because it wasn't intentional. And so I did not want to do that in this sampler. So I knew immediately that when I stitched it, I wanted the sampler to be this wide. I only wanted it to be as wide as the saying. So I counted and that's 159 stitches. Well, in my mind, 159 is really close to 160. Which means if I'm stitching on 16 count Ada or 32 count linen, that's going to be a perfect 10 inches across, right? I also know that a 10 by 13 frame isn't going to do it because a 10 by 13 frame isn't really, doesn't really have a 10 inch and a 13 inch opening. So I knew I would have to bump to an 11 by 14 inch frame in order to fit my 10 inches across. So immediately I knew I'm going to use an 11 by 14 frame. I'm going to stitch it on either 16 count Ada or 32 count linen. So now all I have to do is adjust my height. Now, if this is 10 inches across and I'm using an 11 inch frame, and my frame is gonna be 14 inches down, I knew that my stitched area needed to be 13 inches down because I wanted the same margin 
on all of the sides. So if my frame is an inch bigger than my stitching this way, I want my frame to be an inch bigger than my stitching this way. So I knew that I needed 13 inches of stitching, and if I'm getting 16 inches stitches per inch, I just multiplied 13 by 16, and that gave me the number of stitches that I needed with, or lengthwise, okay? So there's lots of math. Once I figured out how, how many stitches I needed this way, I went about designing the sampler. And so that's what this little sketch is here. I knew that I wanted two rows of alphabets and I needed two rows because remember, I'm cutting this off right here. So in order to finish the alphabet, I needed two rows and I probably won't have any room to do numbers and that's okay. I'm good with that. So where am I here? Two rows of alphabet. Then I wanted the people centered and then the saying and then I wanted the flowers centered and then down here I'm gonna do rot by LSL in the year or whatever. And so once I counted up how many stitches that would be, I was able to add here and there, you know, a space here, a space there between the borders um, in order to come up with the total number of stitches that I would need, which 13 times 16 is 208 stitches. So I needed 208 stitches. And it really, it worked out in this case that um, including the, the two borders, because I am going to do the, the top and the bottom borders, um, it was actually pretty painless for me to design that. So if you can look at my picture here, the people here, the flowers here, with the words in between, okay, which is exactly what I have. People, words, flowers. So underneath the flowers, there's gonna be a little border and then it's gonna be wrought by LSL and then it's gonna be a repeat of the top border. Now here you can see I do have extra room because I used the smaller alphabet. I didn't use the larger alphabet. So I will finish Z here and then, um, okay, I've got extra room so I can go ahead and either do um, a lowercase alphabet, start that, or I can just do as many numbers as will fit in there and that's probably what I'll end up doing. And then on either side of the people here, because you see I have lots of room, and then on either side of the flowers, I'm going to have room. And so that's when I am just going to take these motifs and put some in um, and add them in that way. I'm not going to do the house. I'm certainly not going to do the cow. I did that cow for um, Sparrow. And I'm going to have to do that cow again for the second side of Sparrow. I don't want to do that cow again. So I'm just going to fill in using these motifs. And if I have to come up with some separate motifs for fill-ins, then I will do that as well. But that was my thinking on this sampler. And when I'm done, it will fit an 11 by 14 frame and all will be well. Okay, so that's how to do it if you want to fit a, a average standard frame. Remember, eight by 10 inch frames are not eight inch openings by 10 inch openings. It's more like seven and a half by nine and a half. Five by sevens, probably not five inch by seven inch openings, okay? So you have to remember that, otherwise your math is gonna be off. Um, for Autumn's Fruitful Labor, I already had the frame that I wanted. I found one at a thrift store. Um, this is very oblong, right? It's tall and skinny. And so it's, I knew it would be very difficult to try to fit this into like an 11 by 14 or even a 16 by 20. So I found a long, skinnier frame at the thrift store and that was I want to say oh wait a minute do I have it here 
should be in my stitching journal. Yes, this is this year's stitching journal. Here is my frame, 10 and a half by 15 and a half. Okay, so that was where I began. I knew I wanted it to fit, needed to be 10 and a half inches wide or less than 10 and a half inches wide actually to, to fit the frame. So that's when I started doing some math. You see all this math here? So the sampler is 137 stitches across. So I figured out how wide it would be on 14 count Ada or 28 count linen. I figured out how wide it would be on 16 count Ada or 32 count linen, 18 count Ada or 36 count linen, and 15 count or um, 30 count linen. So I did the math for all four sizes and it's just dividing the number of stitches by the number of stitches per inch. So 14, 15, 16, and 18. What I found was on 14 count Ada or 28 count linen, it would be nine and three quarters inches across. On 16 count, it would only be eight inches across. And 15 count, it would be nine point something or about nine inches across. So I decided nine inches across left me with too much of a border around the edge. So immediately I knew I wanted it to be nine and three quarters inches across, which meant I needed to stitch this on 28 count linen. So I did more math because this sampler is 227 stitches long. And that would have been 16 and a quarter inches on 28 count linen, which is too long, right? That won't fit my 15 and a half inch frame. So again, making the borders the same size, I deduced that I needed to cut out 20 stitches from the length of this sampler, okay? Now, Obviously, I'm not taking it out of here because that would be a designing nightmare. Okay? There are a couple things I could do. I could remove the top and bottom border. That really wouldn't affect things too much. I could maybe use a smaller font and put it closer together. What I decided to do was take out this whole line right here these sunflowers because that doesn't really affect the piece that much and it's going to make it almost the perfect length for me. Now you know I like symmetry right? So when I go and stitch this bottom I'm putting another sunflower here where this bird is and I am taking these two birds and I'm going to bring them down and put them in the center. And so that'll be how I'm going to get my symmetry and satisfy my geometrical mind, okay? So resizing doesn't have to be difficult. Um, I do have a stitching program on my computer. I forget the name of it, PC, it's from Hobbywear. It's from the late 1990s, early 2000s. I don't even know if it's available anymore. I will put the name of it down below in the show notes. Um, I, I do use that frequently, especially if I'm um, changing fonts. I use that for this one because I needed to change the whole wording. <laughs> so it came in handy for that. Um, Speaking of this one, my big toe just came out with a new design. I think it's the Prayer of St. Francis. It's huge, but it coordinates so nicely with this one. So I am going to buy that. I am going to change all of the words on that one. I don't know what Bible verse I'm going to um, use for that one yet. I'm thinking maybe the Lord bless thee and keep thee. Um, 
but I'm going to stitch it in these same colors. So that's a plan for 2020 as well. Anyway, back to resizing. You need to do math. Sorry, <laughs> there's no way around it. You need to know how many stitches per inch you want to fit the frame. Um, so it frequently requires figuring out how wide is this going to be if I use 14 count or 28 count? How wide is this going to be if I use 32 count? Which remember, 32 count linen is 16 inches stitches per inch. Um, you would think that the math teacher would be able to do this on a calculator, but I never have a calculator that has functioning batteries, so <laughs> to do it by hand. Um, so there is some math involved, but once the math is done, um, it's usually pretty easy to adjust this way. 98% of the time, I leave the width however wide it's supposed to be. Um, this was, I think probably this is the only time that I have changed the width of a sampler. And I only did that because I knew I was, I was changing this as well, right? If I, if I wasn't going to change this, then I wouldn't be messing with the width, okay? So if you're beginning and have never resized a sampler before, I would definitely plan to either add rows or take away rows. Um, as far as adding goes, you can add more rows of alphabets, you can add more rows of numbers, you can add your favorite saying or Bible verse. It's really easy to add. Taking away is a little trickier, especially, I don't have any examples here, but this border right here, really easy to resize, right? If you have a border that has, it doesn't repeat like, this one repeats every, I don't know, eight or nine stitches, right? Some of the floral borders, they have a 30 stitch repeat. And so those get tricky to resize because the, the border is not easy. So start with something that has an easy border. Start with something like this. Um, and give it a whirl. Because I love being able to spend my stitching budget on floss and charts rather than framing. And so I, I can't even remember. The last time I had something specially framed was when we were living in Mississippi and I took it to Keesler Air Force Base because the base had its own frame shop. So it was cheap because it wasn't like a for-profit shop. Um, so that was the last thing that I had framed. So 2003 probably was the last time I paid for something to be professionally framed. Since then, I've been resizing um, so that I can fit in either standard frames or frames that I've already acquired at thrift stores or flea markets. So I hope to talk to you more about resizing because I know that I've gotten a lot of questions about it. So every time I stitch something that needs to be resized, I'm hoping to kind of give you a picture into my thought process to inspire you to do the same. All right, I think that's it. Um, as I mentioned, I am doing monogamous mania. So I will be working on Sparrow. I will be watching all of your progresses on your lovely charts and projects. I will be stitching away on Sparrow for at least the first 19 days of May. I do need to get a um, Prairie Schooler start in for May, so probably I will stitch on Sparrow for 19 days. I will make a start on Prairie Schooler Project. I will do enough so that I can fill it in at StitchCon. Um, and then June, I hope to start Blue Skin and the Penny Pumpkin. So again, I can get them to the point where I just have to fill in at StitchCon. So I know I am way over planning for StitchCon. I'm never gonna get to, to everything every fill-in that I want to 